Right, time for our next video on chemical weapons and how to protect yourself from them. And today we're going to look at phosgene. And phosgene was the gas that succeeded chlorine in World War One, and was certainly the nastiest chemical agent of the war, at least in terms of casualties. Phosgene's estimated to have killed about 80 to 90 percent of the people in World War One who died from chemical weapon exposure. So that's around 80,000 people, you know, give or take 10,000 or so. So what phosgene is? is it's sort of similar to chlorine in many ways on how it spreads and how it's used. So it's denser than air, and if you smell it, it smells like apparently freshly mown grass or sort of cut hay, something like that. But if you smell it, you've already um, inhaled four times a safe amount, which means if you are smelling it and you then realise to put your mask on, you might have already died or, you know, at least taken severe lung damage from what phosgene does. So. Phosgene, like chlorine, is kind of a chemical byproduct that's made in industry. Phosgene actually has a lot of uses, supposedly, as pesticides. And we'll be getting into pesticides in a later video, because lots of chemical weapons are developed from pesticides. Um, but you know, pesticide use, plastic use, apparently, you know, lots of industrial uses. So if it's in a controlled industrial environment, it's supposedly, you know, one of those very good things. The issue is that... Because humans are very good at killing each other, we figured out that something like phosgene that's got lots of industrial uses and happens to be very toxic is very, very good for killing other people. So, phosgene, I can't work out really from what I've read online if phosgene was first used by the French or Germans because lots of uh, sites conflict the information. But it was supposedly 1915 it was used either by the French or Germans but then everybody started using it once they realised it was a good chemical weapon to use on your enemies. So, again, phosgene is like chlorine in terms of it's denser than air, it's heavier than air. So it sits in, you know, craters and things, um, it lingers around. Now, phosgene is more dangerous, both because it needs a much lower amount to kill you, and secondly, because it lingers around much longer, you know, and again, it's harder to detect. So if you smell it, you're already probably dead. Um, it's harder to see as well. Supposedly low concentrations of phosgene, you know, enough that's still enough to kill you, are pretty much invisible to the eye. When it builds up more and more, you may be able to see sort of discoloured air, but that's, you know, when a massive amount is sprayed. So what phosgene does is it gets into your respiratory tract, and when it's in your respiratory tract, it pretty much just destroys the linings of your lungs. Um... So, the weird thing with phosgene as well is often, like some other chemical weapons, you can inhale a lot of it and you can feel fine to begin with. But what then happens is, sort of within 24 to 48 hours, you start coughing up the linings of your lungs, you start going blind, essentially. You know, you start getting horrible headaches, things like that, until you die. So, it's very, very nasty stuff. It can kill you outright, but most of the time it's 24 to 48 hours later the people exposed to it begin to die. So, how do you protect yourself from phosgene? Same way you protect yourself from most chemical weapons, a respirator. You put the respirator on. When you've got the respirator on, you'll be able to uh, obviously protect yourself. Now, with phosgene, I am actually unsure if it uh, can damage your eyes through eye contact. If you inhale it, it can cause blindness, but I don't know if it can actually directly, you know, cause poisoning through the eyes, or if it can damage your eyes. But I think it's a good bet that you don't want to get it in your eyes regardless. Now, just taking my gas mask apart there, look. <laughs> Phosgene is um, apparently also really nasty because it actually is really good at sticking into your clothes, a bit like chlorine does, but... What can happen is if you're exposed to phosgene, you can get out of the area and you might be alright, but your clothes might soak through a phosgene and then a lot of people don't realise they don't take the clothes off immediately, they don't take their clothes off properly, um, you know, which can be a problem. So if you had something of a zipper on, you could just unzip it and take it off and then chuck it in a bag. The issue is that if you had a t-shirt on, you shouldn't then pull the t-shirt or something like that over your head because then you're, you know, wiping all the phosgene into your hair and your eyebrows and your eyes and your mouth and nose, whatever. What you're meant to do is just get some scissors and cut it off and put it in the bag. Then you're meant to rinse yourself down as much as possible. <clears throat> now, what I was reading online is says there's not actually any antidote to phosgene, so if you've inhaled it, I guess you're screwed. Um, when I was looking at the CDC in America's page on how to actually protect yourself from phosgene, they'd advised 
if you have swallowed phosgene or inhaled it, you don't drink water and you don't try and make yourself sick. You rush to an emergency room where I guess they can do some sort of stomach pumping or something, or lung pumping, I don't know, to try and get as much of it out of your system as possible. And they can probably treat some of the side effects of phosgene, just not phosgene poisoning it itself. But as I said, it's really nasty stuff. Um, the good thing is, as I was saying, it doesn't seem to be one of those diseases, not diseases, sorry, it doesn't seem to be one of those chemical weapons that can do m too much damage, at least through skin contact. It's not a blister or nerve agent, but you still don't want to get it touching your skin. So, if you are exposed to it, get out the area as soon as possible. Basically, chuck all the clothes away you were wearing. Um, if there's any clothes that you can't get off without pulling it over your head, then cut them off with a knife or scissors. Um, and then go to an emergency room and tell them you think you've been exposed to phosgene. But... I said it's deadlier than chlorine. In World War One, apparently it was often used with chlorine, that they'd have shells mixed with the two, or they'd actually shoot shells at the same time. The reason being that because chlorine's not quite as dense as phosgene, if you mix them together, it means that the phosgene is carried by the chlorine a bit more, and it spreads over a wider area. Um, but again, you can see chlorine coming. You can't really see phosgene coming unless it's in massive numbers. But... We'll get onto this when we start going into the blister agents, like mustard gas and lewisite, in later videos, but in World War I, one of the big things with chemical weapons was to combine them. So you'd use a mix of chemical weapons at once, so you can't protect yourselves from them as easily. One of the things they like to do was use mustard gas or lewisite, so your face starts blistering and bleeding. Then, when you pull your mask off because, you know, you're in physical pain, you pull your mask off and then you inhale the chlorine and phosgene. So... You know, there's lots of nasty things like that, but yeah, phosgene is certainly not nice stuff, but we'll be saying that for pretty much every chemical weapon we cover in these videos. Um, but yeah, it's dangerous because it doesn't have too distinctive a smell, freshly mown grass. By the time you've inhaled that and smelt it, you've already inhaled too much to, you know, maybe live. Um, it's hard to see it coming. You don't need much at all to inhale to kill you, and it can kill you over 24 to 48 hours where you cough up the linings of your lungs. So, very, very nasty stuff, and yeah, again, a respirator with working filters is the best way of protecting yourself from it, other than not being around where it's used. 